Hello again. We are starting a new discussion on a different kind of function. We're going to be talking about quadratic functions, and uh, today we're going to talk about how to graph those. So let's get started. There are certain characteristics about every quadratic function. First of all, when you graph it, it looks like this curved uh, U shape over here. We call that a parabola. The standard form of that parabola is f of x or y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are all replaced with numbers. A, of course, can't equal 0 because that means the x squared term would disappear and we would have a linear function instead. So I have to say that a is not equal to 0. The parent function, which is the simplest version of that uh, function family, is uh, f of x or y equals x squared. The axis of symmetry, which I draw with that red line over there, it cuts the parabola in half uh, vertically. And so the equation of that vertical line is x equals negative b over 2a. You would plug in your a and b uh, from that blue function into that formula, and you would get the uh, constant that goes on the right. Notice that uh, once you find the axis of symmetry, that number is also going to be the x-coordinate of the vertex. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. The y-intercept is going to be just that c-value that's at the end of the uh, function in standard form. The domain is going to be all real x's because this graph goes left to negative infinity and right to positive infinity. The range though is not going to be all real y's because it's limited by that vertex there. And as I was mentioning before, notice that the axis of symmetry does go directly through the vertex. It has the same x-coordinate as the vertex. So when I'm finding the axis of symmetry, I'm also finding the x-coordinate of the vertex. All right, so when I'm graphing a parabola, let's start out with basics. Let's say I'm given that function there, f of x or y equals x squared minus 4x minus 5. So what I would do is I would start out making a table of x and y values, and I would plot those points on a graph. Um, and I want to do quite a few because I want to get the general shape of what that graph actually looks like. Um, so I want to see things like the vertex, whereabouts the vertex is, where the x-intercepts would be, where the y-intercepts would be. And um, once I have enough points, then I can join them with a curve, as you see right there. So now I know where it is. Uh, once I've got it graphed, I can identify those characteristics. The vertex is at the bottom of the parabola. That means it's a, mi a minimum at 2 and negative 9. That means that the axis of symmetry has the same x-coordinate as the vertex. So that's x equals 2. The y-intercept is going to be at negative 5. The x-intercepts are going to be at negative 1 and 5 on the x-axis. All right. Now, if I have a function instead of a graph, I still need to be able to identify those characteristics, so I'm going to have to use formulas instead. So the vertex, I need the x and y for the vertex, because that's a point with two coordinates. So I'll use the same formula as for the axis of symmetry. That is x equals negative b over 2a. So plugging in my values of a and b in there, I get that x is negative 8 over negative 2, which can be reduced to 4. Now to figure out the y-coordinate of the vertex, I'm going to take that x and plug it into my original function. Everywhere there's an x, I'm going to replace that with 4. And if I do that, I get um, 1. So my vertex is at 4 and 1. That means that the axis of symmetry is at x equals 4. And the y-intercept is just that c value at the end of the function, so that's negative 15. All right, now let's talk about maximum and minimum. Sometimes your vertex is at a maximum, sometimes it's at a minimum. So let's figure out uh, when that happens. So I'm going to find the vertex and then determine whether it's a maximum or a minimum. And then I'm going to state the domain and range for that function. So again, I let x equal negative b over 2a, and I plug in my a and b from my function. I get negative 4 over 4, which simplifies to 1. To find the y-coordinate, I plug that back into the function, and I get a y-value of 18. So that means my vertex is at 1 and 18. Is that a maximum, or is it a minimum? That all depends on my a value. If my a value, the very first number, is negative, if it's less than 0, that means the parabola opens down. So the vertex is actually at the top of the parabola instead of the bottom. That means that the vertex is a maximum. Okay? The domain is all real numbers like it always will be. And then the range, because I have a maximum at 18, my range goes from negative infinity all the way up to that y-coordinate of 18. Okay, Here's another example. 
If I have f of x equals 3x squared plus 12x plus 9, I'm going to find the vertex, figure out whether it's a max or a min, and state the domain and range. So again, x equals negative b over 2a. I'm going to plug in my a and b, and I get negative 12 over 6. That means that my x-coordinate of my vertex is negative 2. I plug that into the original function, and I get a y-value of negative 3. That means that my vertex is at negative 2 and negative 3. Now, again, since my a value is positive this time, that means that the parabola opens up, meaning that the vertex is at the very bottom of the parabola, making it a minimum. All right, so the domain, again, is all real numbers, and the range now goes from a y value of negative 3 all the way up to uh, positive infinity. Okay, so here's a real-world example of how we would use parabolas. Uh, Spooner is kicking a soccer ball, and the height of the ball is modeled by that function there, negative 16x squared plus 64x, where f of x represents the height of the ball after x seconds. So the first thing I'm going to do is graph the function, and again, I just plug in uh, x values that make sense. I'm going to start at 0 because that's when time started, and once I have enough points, I can graph it, and there's my graph right there. The next part of the question would be, what is the maximum height of the ball? Well, the maximum height of the ball is going to be at the vertex, which is at 2 and 64. So the maximum height would be at 64, and that would happen two seconds after he kicks the ball. And then the last part of the question is, when does the ball hit the ground? Well, that means I'm looking for when the height is 0, and that's going to be at uh, x equals 4, so the ball is going to hit the ground after four seconds, four seconds after he kicks the ball. All right, so that is uh, the basics of graphing quadratic functions. If you have any questions, please let me know, and I will see you tomorrow.